Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, on Friday, March 6th, and I'm going to read more of our book from uh, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, but uh, I want a quick update. I did not get to go to the conference today like I wanted. I had planned. See, I'm all dressed up. This is about as dressed up as I can get. I'm not very corporate. And, um... Then I had to sit on the phone with the IRS for about an hour and 45 minutes before they answered the phone. And I needed to do it because a client of mine was, he didn't call and tell me, but he, had to, he was going to get levied and they were going to like bang his bank account if I didn't sort through this thing. And I started it, it was like 1230. So I didn't get finished till like 330. And by that time the conference was over. So no conference for Lonnie, but... You know, that's the nature of my business, right? Like, uh, people rely on me. And I, I actually didn't charge the guy money. I He paid me to do tax prep and then had penalties that he ignored. And so that's the nature of my business. I just did not charge him. But it's not about money. It's about service. And that's what this is all about. That's why I'm reading this book. In service. Do I think anybody's really listening? Maybe 25, 30 people. But this is really for posterity's sake because in 10 years, if we still have an internet and if people still see YouTube, I think that these book readings, although some of them are really horrible and I apologize for that, I think they're going to be really important. And the information in this book is really important. The complete disregard for human life is documented in this book. The complete Disregard, 100% disregard for life on our entire planet, human or otherwise, by the American government intentionally through the AEC. It's a direct arm of the government and they have complete disregard for life. Which is why, and interestingly enough, people are beginning to understand that Fukushima is an issue and nobody knows what to do about it. And I think our job is to help people learn how to mitigate it and talk to them about health and nutrition. And when you get an option to pick, pick the healthy option and don't eat fish. Seriously, if, could you imagine if we had 100% boycott on fish? Like if people just refuse to stop eating fish in America, I guarantee you we would under, they would tell us about Fukushima. Like we could, if we used our dollars, the little scratch of beans that we put out every time we spend money, if we just refuse to participate, I think that's our greatest power because that's all they care about is money. So if we withhold, they'll listen. Anyways, that's off my soapbox. I'm going to get going and, um, I don't remember who it was, but I got a text today during work that uh, somebody contributed to the Post Ignorance Fund on the GoFundMe page, and woohoo! Thank you. We need that because Kevin's leaving, I think Tuesday. Uh, I, I just told him today his ticket. I he saw it, but we have to, you know, we're going to get him rooms. So every little dollar helps, even if it's only ten bucks. Believe you me, it does help. So. Um, Anyways, let me get to reading where I'm three minutes, almost four in. Uh, I'll take off my glasses instead of doing the double glasses thing so I don't look like a complete lunatic. <laughs> so this is the next sub-chapter. Uh, we're still in Chapter 5, Lip Service to the Public Health, and we're at the bottom of page 122. A blistering attack from the AEC. But the promoter realizes very little when he thinks his parochial interests are possibly threatened by the truth. And, and so, instead of joining us, considering the overwhelming evidence we had just presented at the respected scientific meeting, in the effort to achieve safe radiation standards, the AEC attacked us in a blistering, unparalleled fashion. In doing so, the AEC has set back the prospects for a rational, safe development of atomic energy in this country more than they could have in any other manner. Now check this out. It took him half the book to build up to us that the AEC was attacking them. He had to lay the groundwork for what he's done. Wow. 
The memory of the techniques of Adolf Hitler in coping with inconvenient truth are still fresh in the minds of most people who lived through the dark Nazi period. Tell a big lie and tell it again and again as widely as possible. And Hitler knew the method worked, no matter how diabolical it be. Today's environmental rapists, bent upon their short-sighted view of gain, have not failed to appreciate this useful lesson from Hitler's School for Scoundrels. Wow, that's an awesome, I want to read that whole thing again. <laughs> Today's environmental rapists, bent upon their short-sighted view of gain, have not failed to appreciate the useful lesson from Hitler's School of Scoundrels. That is awesome. School for Scoundrels, not of. School for Scoundrels. Today's environmental rapists, that's exactly what they are, environmental rapists. No matter, and no, today's environmental rapists, bent upon their short-sighted view of gain, exactly, have not failed to appreciate the useful lesson from Hitler's School for Scoundrels. Sorry, I just had to keep reading that, you guys. I'm sorry. Thus, far from helping us protect the public health and welfare, a task the, AE, e, the AEC itself has assigned to us. The AEC unleashed a blistering attack upon us with slander, ridicule, and denial, with everything but any valid evidence refuting our findings. And that is in italics. With everything but any valid evidence refuting our findings. Gone completely were the pious phrases of AEC about, we want you to tell the truth. Faced with a threat to its bureaucratic parochial interests in selling its ware, the AEC clearly demonstrated that when the chips are down on questions of protecting human beings and their environment, the promotional huckster role wins out handily over the public protector role. <clears throat> wow. We are not critical of the AEC, nor of the apoplectic reaction of its officials, sputtering and fuming insults at us for telling the truth. We were shocked, but gradually came to realize that when the AEC, that the AEC officials are victims of having been placed in a hopeless quandary by the Atomic Energy Act, which assigns them two conflicting irreconcilable roles promoter and protector. I don't give them a free pass. I think that's bullshit. The proper approach is not to criticize the AEC unduly. I think you're wrong and this has been proven fucking six, 40 years later and guess what? They fucking won out by your nice attitude. The proper approach is not to criticize the AEC unduly but rather to take away from them all authority and responsibility for public health protection and all aspects of regulation of atomic energy. With their well-developed Madison Avenue type advertising and public relations enterprises, the AEC will be able to function as a sales organization for their diverse products and programs. But the public would not have to fear that the salesmen would also be the guardians of the public health. We as a society know only too well the dire results of that particular combination in many, many years, many, many areas besides atomic energy. Some of the specific charges leveled at us by the AEC and hangers-on must be studied carefully. For by such study, those who wish to try, at least, to preserve a livable world for themselves and their children can learn what they have in store for themselves from polluters of the environment. That's exactly why I'm reading this book. Unprofessional conduct. This is in quotes. Unprofessional conduct. Presenting their findings in the newspaper instead of as a scientist, as a scientist should. That's what we were charged with. Well... As related above, we were guest speakers at one of the most eminent scientific meetings on the subject of nuclear science and the environment. That's, in, that's the title of the, of the meeting that they were at. It's in capitals. Nuclear Science and the Environment. 
Could a more professional and appropriate form of presentation be imagined? Nothing new, it was said. If there was nothing new, why were all the AEC cannons roaring, even though ineptly aimed? <laughs> Or are we to assume that a radiation hazard of 10 to 20 times as much cancer and leukemia as had previously been expected is nothing new? What we wonder would be something new for the AEC officials. A hundred times as much cancer? A thousand times as much cancer? Ten thousand times as much cancer? Just what would it take to worry the AEC about hazards to human beings? In quotes, the experts considered all this already, unquote. Indeed, known to us, a group known as the Task Force for the International Commission on Radiological Protection had reviewed the new evidence. When we saw their publication two months after our presentation, we were most gratified to find that our number, our numbers compare our, I'm sorry about this, you guys. When we saw their publication two months after presentation, we were most gratified to find our numbers comparable to those of the task force. Had we not done our work, they would have reached essentially our conclusions. So the quote, experts, unquote, agree with us. In quotes again, scientifically indefensible, unquote. We are scientists. We know the appropriate way to determine the validity of scientific conclusions is to present them so that other scientists can review the findings and challenge them. We were delighted to make our conclusions available for other scientists to agree with or refute. We are still waiting for the first bit of scientific evidence to refute any of our scientific presentation. The words scientifically indefensible shouted by wounded atomic hucksters can hardly be called scientific refutation. End quotes. The benefits outweigh the risks. Therefore, Goffman and Tamplin are wrong. Unquote. That's a real doll. The issue at stake is the risk of cancer and leukemia from radiation. Isn't it essential for AEC to at least try to calculate risk themselves and try to estimate benefits before announcing one outweighs the other? Besides, this had absolutely nothing to do whether our risk calculations are correct. In quotes again. AEC programs will never expose people to the allowable amount of radiation. Therefore, Goffman and Tamplin's calculations are wrong. Unquote. New subchapter. The first step is to reduce allowable radiation dosage. Our calculations describe how many extra cancers and leukemias will occur if everyone gets the allowable dose of radiation. The first thing we said in our presentation was that we should take steps immediately to see that they never do. And the one sound step is to take is to take and the one sound step to take is to reduce immediately the allowable amount before such exposure becomes possible. I'm going to stop there because my brain is swirling. I think I we, we read an idea tonight that we can actually lobby for now. We can actually lobby our elected officials to change the nuclear regulatory commissioners and separate their roles from being promoters and protectors of public health. Like, they can't be promoters of, uh, of nuclear uh, industry. They can't be promoters of the nuclear industry while being protectors. And I'm, I'm going to do some homework because I have a feeling that that is why the Nuclear Regulatory Commission changed its name from the AEC. If anybody knows that, I'd love to hear the comments. But um, I think that was probably the goal in renaming the AEC, the NRC, and because in Congress, every time you hear the Congress, whenever they have a hearing, they say, well, you're protectors of the public health. But I think what's missing, and maybe our own elected officials do not know that, is that it's not just protectors. They're promoters of, nuclear in, of the nuclear industry. So, 
if you have an if you have an industry that kills and harms and you're supposed to promote it and and promoting it makes everybody rich everybody that touches their finger even the lowly worker who works there makes a freaking decent salary than he could make anywhere else he or she could make anywhere else so everyone quote thrives except near the end of their lives then they all get cancer <laughs> But just like us, that's what's going to happen to us. Except it's not just happening to us. Uh, who called me today? Brent Lust called me and said his he knows two little girls that have cancer. And nobody around him believes that it's caused by radiation. Little girls don't get cancer. We don't just get cancer. Cancer is not something humanity had scourging us. It wasn't like the freaking plague. It's caused by man-made radiation. As this book has outlined, if you get into nuclear energy, you are going to give humanity cancer, leukemias, a host of other diseases. We're going to mutate our species. We're going to cause sterility. We're going to, That's just us. And it affects every species on the planet. And they did come absolute disregard for human life and human safety. Now, I missed that seminar today, and I actually, I, you know, I, I can't wait to talk to some friends that I know we're going. But um, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to report on it for you. But to be honest, I couldn't just walk away from my client and say, oh, I'll call them Monday. Because if we didn't call them by today, it, could, it was really seriously the last day. And we had to call. And if I'd have gotten back at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock, I'm not sure I could have gotten through. I've called at 4 o'clock often, and then 6.30, 7 o'clock, the phone hangs up and says, oh, call back Monday. So I made a value judgment call to stick through it with my client. Anyways, um, I'll end here. Ciao, you guys. Talk to you later. Put your courage feet on.